okay, we want to solve this differential equation. But before we do that, we need to make this percent of remaining capacity a little more mathematical. So what we really mean by that is if our current population, our current P is, let's say, something like 30, and our limit is something like 100, this question of what's the percentage of remaining capacity is saying what percentage of the total, the total amount is left. So in this case, I would say that 70% or 0.7 is this percent of remaining capacity. The way I got that was I said, well, we're currently using 30%, 30, we're currently using 30 over 100. And what's left is one minus 30 over 100. So one minus 0.3 is 0.7. So mathematically, what we're talking about is we're saying that the percentage of remaining capacity is one minus L over P. And so the book just jumps right in and says this, but I wanted to talk about why, why it's one minus L over P. That's because that, that's how much room we have left to go. If the carrying capacity is L, we've got one minus L over P left to work with. And this amount is gonna factor into what our rate of change, what our rate of increase of P can be. Okay, so now we just wanna solve this equation, which we can do using our separation of variables technique. If we pull all of the P stuff to the left, and all of the T stuff to the right, we get something that looks like this. And one thing to keep in mind is that the L and the K are just constants. Those could be on either side. It's a little bit easiest if we move the K to the right, if we leave the K to the right, and we move the L to the left. So now we just wanna integrate both sides. Integrating the right should be easy. Integrating the left actually gets a little bit messy. This is absolutely something that we can do. And the, the recommended alternate group discussion topic is actually going through this. But the, I'm just gonna do the, the headlines. So the idea is that we can use partial fractions to rewrite this as the integral of one over P minus, I'm sorry, one over P plus one over L minus P, I believe, yes, DP equals the integral of K DT. So this was just some partial fractions steps. It was a little bit of algebra and then some partial fractions. Absolutely something that we know how to do, not worth spending time talking about. And when we integrate both sides, we're gonna get an ln of p plus an ln of l minus p. Those ln terms can be combined and we can get something that looks like ln of l minus p over p equals negative kt plus c. So I, I did a couple steps here. One of them was moving a negative over to flip what this l, it was p over l minus p, I flipped it. Uh, it just makes the math easier later. Again, I'm not going through all the steps, but just the headlines. And lastly, if we exponentiate both sides, we're going to end up with, well, first off, we're gonna end up with l minus p, over p equals e to the negative kt. Uh, we're gonna pull this c down. We're gonna call that an a. And what we really wanna do is we wanna solve for p. If we do that, again, skipping a couple steps, we're gonna end up with p equals l over one plus this term. Okay, and, and that's, that's our solution. Uh, for the record, this A has a relationship to P naught, to, to our original, our starting value. It's L, L minus P naught over P naught, um, but it just makes the whole thing a little bit more complicated to, to put that in. Okay. So don't fret too much about this whole derivation. I do think that if your group doesn't want to 
do its do sort of the normal recap of the whole playlist that this is a good alternative to go through the details of this uh, it's good to to get some some algebra practice that said the important takeaway is that if we start off with this particular differential equation the solutions to it are going to be functions of the form that look like this. Okay, so I've, I've tried to sketch one. Let's take a look at some, some actually, some, some computer drawn versions of this. I think this is the one I want. Yes. So I will share the link to this Desmos page in the, in the description. But the general idea is that we have that function that I just wrote there. And we can specify k, p naught, and l. So again, a comes from, a has to do with p naught. Um, and we can play around with what effect these constants have on what our function is doing. So if our limit is decreasing, so I've also drawn the limit in green. If our limit is decreasing, then the sort of naturally the the whole curve is going to be a little bit flatter it's going to level off at at something just before what that limit is we could also mess with the k so for a higher value of k that means we're increasing faster and we see that the point is the halfway point and if our initial if our starting position increased we can see that the place where this intersects zero is increasing. Anyway, this is what a, oh, and if our starting value is zero, then no one ever gets it. So it looks like that. Once we have a little bit, then, then we, we get this. Okay, so this is what a logistic curve looks like. We're gonna be talking a little bit more about this. We're gonna talk about how we can find this midpoint. But the overall idea, again, is that this is a situation where it wants to behave like an exponential growth. However, there's some limiting factor. This is how the model, and this is how you know, real life adjusts to that total limiting factor.